Spectacular specialist shuttle. Let's get together for a huddle, but not too close. Got to keep the bubble. Let's start learning. Come on, let's hustle. We fit together like a puzzle. Library, music, art, PE. It's the super spectacular specialist shuttle. to this week's art lesson. We are still in segment three, which means our theme is still home. I'm here at my home with my cat, Ella, and we are about to do an art activity. Last week, the specialists and I visited Strawberry Bank, where there are many old homes. So for this week's activity, we will be inspired by the colonists and one of the crafts that they created using corn husks. It's called a corn husk doll. What do you think? Aww. <laughs> Screech, that's the wrong kind of corn. We don't need popcorn. We need an ear of corn. Let's see what's in Screech's treasure chest. It looks like he has some corn husks and it looks like he's got some string. Also, he has some corn kernels. Our word this week is inventive. Inventive means that you are good at thinking up new ideas. Screech was very inventive with his use of materials. He used the corn husk to make the owl and the corn kernels to make the eyes and the beak. Welcome to Salvador's Sillies. What has ears but cannot hear? <laughs> A field of corn! <laughs> Why doesn't anyone laugh at the farmer's jokes? Because they're too corny! <laughs> What is a snake's favorite subject in school? <laughs> History. <laughs> Why did the pilgrims sail to America? Because it was too far to swim. <laughs> This week, we will look at how Native Americans were inventive artists. Hi everyone, I'm here with my boyfriend, Corey. He is a doctoral student who is researching colonial homes in New England. And I thought it would be fun to have him as a guest this week. Since the specialist just visited Strawberry Bank, I thought he could help us learn a little bit more about colonial times. Since our activity this week is making corn husk dolls, Corey, would you mind telling us a little bit about why corn was so important during colonial America? Sure. So actually by the time that Europeans started to come over and settle places like Strawberry Bank in the 17th century, 
Native Americans had already been growing corn throughout New England for thousands of years. They actually had a system where they would grow corn, beans, and squash in the same fields. And they actually had wooden platforms where old people and younger people would actually act as scarecrows and yell and scare off the crows to keep wow. them out of the cornfield. Really? Yes. Wow. Different than our scarecrows today. For sure. Most of the settlers had actually been used to growing wheat, but the summers are so short in New England that wheat doesn't grow very well here, so they had to start growing corn, which they learned to do from the Native Americans. One of the other things that the Native Americans taught the Europeans how to make out of corn were corn husk dolls. Oh wow, that sounds like a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Sounds different than some of the toys that we had growing up. For sure. <laughs> So, Corey, is there any meaning behind this corn husk doll? Absolutely. In fact, here's a story about the origin of the corn husk doll. This is the story of the corn husk doll, as told by Mrs. Snow, an Iroquois craftswoman. Many, many years ago, the corn, one of the three sisters, wanted to make something different. Corn made moccasins and she made mats, but corn wanted to do something different, and the Great Spirit gave her permission. So corn made little people out of corn husks, and these little corn husk people were to roam the earth and bring brotherhood and contentment to the Iroquois. But corn made a husk person that was very, very beautiful. This beautiful husk person went into the woods and saw herself reflected in a pool of water. She saw how beautiful she was, and she became very vain and naughty. That began to make the people very unhappy, and so the Great Spirit decided that was not what she was to do. The husk person did not pay attention to the Great Spirit's warning, so it was decided that she was going to have to be punished. Her punishment would be that she would no longer have a face, and she would not be able to converse with the Iroquois, or the birds, or the animals. She would roam the earth forever, looking for something to do to gain her face back again. And that is why we don't put any faces on the corn husk dolls. The Native Americans were very inventive. They created toys and other items out of the husks of the corn they were growing. Here are a couple of examples. The colonists of early America learned how to make these corn husk dolls from the Native Americans. Mothers would make corn husk dolls for their children, and children learned how to make them in time as well. My great-grandmother, who is my mom's grandmother, used to make corn husk dolls all the time. Here is my grandmother showing off her garden at her home. When you grow up on a farm or with a garden, there are endless possibilities for toys you can make. This corn husk doll is very special to me because my mom made it for me. In addition to being an artist, my mom is also an inventor. She makes ball joint dolls today by hand. Think about some of your toys, or maybe even some toys you had when you were younger. Toys have changed over time. The toys that I had growing up were very different than corn husk dolls although I did really like dolls. I loved my dolls. Here I am with a doll from my mama. And I got the doll in the background of this picture while I lived in Taiwan. I still have this doll today. Some of my toys were actually handmade. My parents made this rocking horse. This special toy has traveled with us to all of our different homes and has supplied me and my brothers with lots of fun. We still have this rocking horse today. Welcome to No Name Maker Station! This week you have two activity choices. Our first activity choice is a drawing of Indian corn. But first, let's learn a little bit more about it. We're here with vegetable specialist Kiki Fontenot in her home garden, and she's going to tell us a little bit today about growing corn. Um, Kiki, could you tell us a little bit about this variety of corn that you're growing? 
Sure, Heather. This is actually an ornamental corn. Some people refer to it as uh, Indian corn or rainbow corn. And you're going to see that it has beautiful stripes on the leaves, which makes it a little bit different. But you're also going to notice, and they're not ready to harvest quite yet, but the ears on this corn are going to be red, turquoise, yellow, orange, green, all on the same ear. So they're very, very pretty and rainbow in two different ways. We will be creating a drawing of Indian corn. For this activity, you will need a white piece of paper, a pencil, a black marker for tracing, and crayons or markers for coloring. Start with your paper vertical. Fold it in half by taking the top and bringing it down and matching it up with the bottom corners and then creasing in the middle. Open your paper back up and you will have a nice line in the middle of your paper. Use a pencil to draw the next step. I'm using a marker so you can see what I'm doing in the video. Find your crease line and in the middle of the paper, you're going to draw a little bump line. This is going to be the top of the corn. The next step is to draw a line that comes down on both sides of that bump line and meet at the bottom in a curve. This is the ear of corn. The next step is to draw the corn husks. They're very tall, sometimes as tall or taller than the ear of corn itself. That's why we folded our paper in half. The corn husks are wide at the bottom and pointy at the tip, and sometimes they're kind of curvy. You can layer as many as you like. The next step is to draw all the kernels. Draw a straight line down the middle of the ear of corn. Draw another line next to that going straight down. And then another one on the other side. So you should have drawn three straight vertical lines. The next step is to draw the horizontal lines making all those rows of kernels. Start at the top and draw a line going straight across. Continue drawing horizontal lines as you go down the ear of corn. They should be about evenly spaced. Try to count how many horizontal lines that I draw. For an extra detail, I'm going to add some little texture lines to my corn husks. If you look closely, you'll see a bunch of little lines going up the husk. This is an extra detail step, so you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Finally, it's time to start coloring. You can use markers, crayons, or both if you want. Indian corn has many different colors, so you can pick any that you want. Start by coloring your corn husks. They are usually yellow or brown or warm colors. When you are finished coloring your corn husk, you can begin coloring all of those little corn kernels. The fun part about this step is that you can start anywhere you want and move to any kernel at any time. I'm coloring with one color at a time and bouncing around from kernel to kernel, adding this color in various spots. Keep coloring until all of your kernels are filled in. This activity is a very good skill building activity. This helps us build our coloring skills by filling in all of these little teeny squares. Be creative and have fun with this.
In the next activity, I am going to show you how to make a corn husk doll. You will need one ear of corn, some string, and scissors. You should do this activity at home with an adult to help you. The first step is to cut off the bottom of the corn. Then, carefully peel all the husks off the cob. You will come to a layer of silk that looks kind of like hair. Carefully take the silk off the cob and save it. It can be used as hair. You won't need the corn cob, so you can cook that for dinner. Begin with one corn husk. Place it down in front of you so that the point is facing upward. Place the silk inside of the husk. The brown part should overlap the tip of the husk. Now wrap the husk around the silk. Choose another husk and wrap it around the first husk and the silk. You will keep repeating this step over and over. Continue wrapping husks until you have used about five to six pieces. The next step will be to tie a piece of string where the head will be. About two to three inches from the tip of the husks, tie a piece of string. The next step is to take the bottom of the husks and peel them down and over the string. Carefully do this for all of the husks that you have used. Now you should be able to see the silk coming out where the hairline is. Use a piece of string to tie where the neckline will be. This will define where the head is. For the arms, choose a smaller husk. Hold it up to the doll to measure a length for the arms on both sides of the body. If it is too long, you can fold the husk to the correct length. Once you know how wide you want the arms to be, roll the husk really tightly and tie a string on each end where the wrists would be. To attach the arms, separate the doll's body and slide the arm piece inside. To hold the arms in place, you will need to tie a piece of string on the body underneath where the arms are. If your doll is going to be wearing a dress, then you are finished. 
If you would like your doll to be wearing pants, separate the bottom into two sections. Tie a string at the bottom of each section where the ankle would be. You can use a pair of scissors to cut the feet to the correct length. Be creative with how you finish and decorate your corn husk doll. There are many possibilities. We hope you had fun. Have a great week. This week we learned that during colonial times, many families lived on farms. Many people grew their own food and were inventive by making their own toys. Corn husk dolls and Indian corn can be used to decorate your home during fall. To reflect, think about these questions. Who taught the colonists to make corn husk dolls? What kinds of scarecrows did the Native Americans use? What kinds of toys do you have? And can you imagine making your own toys to play with?